I'm here with uh, Peter Doggers. Uh, Peter, uh, a pleasure talking to you. I've been following your work for many years now and uh, I wanted to know more about you. I wanted the viewers to know more about your journey. Mm -hmm. How did your journey into chess journalism begin? Because I know that you are a strong chess player. You are around 20 to 70. I used to be. Yes. <laughs> I started writing... Uh, I started like blogging in uh, February 2006 and I was sort of writing about some of my own chess but very soon I, uh, I started writing about other things like for example the local Amsterdam championship and then uh, about some international games and, and then a friend of mine uh, invited me to visit the uh, Olympiad in Turin so I went there with a friend and it was great. And suddenly, and, they, and he even managed to give me a press. I had a block for two months, and I, and then suddenly I had a press pass for the Olympiad. So suddenly I was a few meters away from from the Russian team with Kramnik and Switler and, and filming them because I also had this little camera and I was filming all the time. And uh, yeah, I the block became more popular, and um, starting from 2007, uh, I created the name ChessVibes.com. How did that name and, come uh, about? Oh, um, there used to be a French, uh, like, site that was uh, that you could use to import a lot of RSS feeds to follow a lot of different blogs on a, on one big page. It was a French thing, and I think it was called NetVibes, if I remember correctly. And I thought. Uh, this, this word vibes is kind of nice, kind of positive uh, feeling has to it. What if I do combine it with chess and let me check if the URL is still available and it was there and I took it and uh, yeah, and that was it. So I used chess vibes, yeah. And, and you, you mentioned about, you know, shooting stuff, yeah. doing video content. Yeah. I think until then, not many were doing this thing and you no, sort of no. started sharing it openly, right? Like people would shoot something, but they would make it into a product and then sell it not, like video yeah, the, courses or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, it wasn't really happening yet. The thing is, it was also, uh, even YouTube wasn't that big yet yes. in those years. So I remember uh, when I was working uh, with uh, Macaulay Peterson, uh, very early days, we were he was creating uh, things for Linares or, or when I was working uh, with with uh, things in Waikanze, uh, no, Waikanze was already YouTube. But before that, uh, for like a couple of months, I was using a, a site called Blip.tv. Doesn't exist anymore. And then I started using YouTube, of course. So you can still find uh, videos from Waikanze 2007, which was chorus back then, uh, on YouTube, and. Uh, yeah, I was filming the players uh, analyzing the game with a with a wooden uh, uh, demonstration board in the press room. And the funny thing is that in those days, YouTube had a 10-minute cap for videos because otherwise they would become too big. And sometimes players would go on go on for longer than 20 minutes, which meant I had to upload three different videos for uh, for a lecture of like 25 minutes, let's say. But those were also a very big hit because uh, for the chess world, it was. It was just uh, revolutionary to see uh, chess players on, on video uh, on the same day that they play the game and talk about their game, analyze the game. Sometimes I would film and them analyzing like the post-mortem and, uh, and they started realizing that I uh, was sometimes sh sharing uh, valuable opening information that they were talking about. Uh -huh. So I remember one, one day in Dortmund where I was filming a post-mortem and uh, Peter Leko asked me, uh, it's okay, you can film, but can you skip the opening phase, please? Because, you know, maybe they're talking about uh, playing a novelty in the next game, you know? And uh, <laughs> So that was nice, yeah. And, and that's how a uh, lot of people got to know what you were doing. Yeah. But what was your motivation to sort of share it openly? Because at that point, I don't think uh, revenue or anything of that sort was also a possibil possibility, right? Well, I, I must say that uh, from very early on, I had some revenue because New and Chess uh, started to uh, advertise on my website. And also they supported me uh, a little bit together with the ICC actually. Uh, for example, when I flew 
to Mexico in 2007 when Vichy became world champion and I went there with Macaulay. I remember that the a flight and accommodation, uh, New and Chess and ICC actually paid for that because they, uh, they loved what they were, we were doing and they were also, oh, ICC also advertised on my site a little bit. So they saw this as a new uh, exciting project that was I was doing, they were supporting it and that, and that way uh, I could actually start traveling a little bit. I got a little, of, uh, little bit of money for the advertisements. Uh, I also worked, uh, I had similar corporations with FIDE actually. So I, in the 2008, 2009, I went to a few FIDE Grand Prix and, uh, and I helped them with video material and they also uh, uh, helped me financially a little bit. Uh, later on I got a bit more critical of FIDE and uh, corporations like that uh, sort of stopped. But um, well, yeah, uh, in the early days I was sort of cooperating a lot with tournaments. Also I did a lot of the, uh, I did four, four of the Melody Amber tournaments, the last four. I was there and also uh, the ones in Amsterdam, uh, like uh, Youth versus Rising Stars, I worked for those as well. So a lot of tournaments, uh, they actually wanted video material, they wanted me to make those videos for them and uh, make sure that there's video happening on their tournament. Right. So the same as with the Levitov tournament here, where Levitov has his own channel and there's very professional cameraman walking around and making all this video material. I was sort of doing that, but like 15 years ago. Yeah. yeah. And I think one of the things you do really well is storytelling through videos because uh -huh. you are able to capture different moments and then weave it together, maybe ask those questions and you know that you've taken some shots beforehand uh, and, and then you weave it into a compact 3-4 minute video. I think right, that was yeah, something yeah. that uh, you did really well. Thank you, yeah, yeah. I tried to, uh, to make something that was interesting, yeah, to watch of course. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, at some point I started working with music, I went to like uh, royalty free music websites and uh, made sure that there's nice music and uh, when I was at a tournament in Spain in Lyon I made sure there was some Spanish music under it you know and uh, stuff like that and uh, yeah combining interviews with shots from the game and uh, sort of as b-roll and yeah tr just try to improve whenever I was making something I tried to improve from the last time so yeah, but I was enjoying it, yeah. Was there someone in chess who inspired you to do this or it was all like uh, mm. from somewhere outside chess? Well, inspired I would not say, but but I, I think I learned the most from Macaulay because he actually did a film course in Amsterdam here. That's how I met him. He was studying uh, for one year. He was studying at, uh, at a f at university doing film uh, science and uh, we met in a tournament in Hogeveen. And, uh, so he, he knew a bit more about theory and about uh, from what positions you should place your camera and stuff like that and uh, he was very technical also very well with lighting and, and, and with, with the editing part so if anyone uh, it was him who uh, taught me a lot yeah. Yeah I remember I worked with him for some time in 2017 when right. he was working for Chessbase and he right. had this very nice finishing touches yeah. to the stuff he did. Exactly. Uh, very good high quality work. Yeah, yeah his editing was, was, uh, was, was clearly uh, very nice. He made some some great stuff as well. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, well, Chess Vibes continued growing. I I actually launched some magazines as well. I was running uh, chess magazines in in PDF and PGN format because I wanted to create some uh, extra revenue stream apart from the advertising. Because being dependent on advertising is not a very good idea anymore in the internet world, and uh, you need to have some more. And and. Um, that was also quite successful. I had Anish uh, Giri as a, com as a columnist for a while and, and Gawain Jones and Erwin Lamy for example and uh, the opening magazine with Robert Riss and Marijn van Delft who were doing a lot of work. So um, what is also very nice is that uh, we had a middle game column by I am who also visited this tournament. His name is Arthur van der Oude Wetering, yeah, a very difficult name for foreigners. I know he's written these books. And these books he wrote, they were actually based on the columns he wrote in, uh, in my magazine. So it's very nice to see people uh, expanding and afterward. And, uh, and then he created another book and uh, he really got, became sort of an expert in these in this ch chess themes, these technical themes that repeat uh, in history and all that. So that's very nice as well. So yeah, Chess Vibes was a great time, but... Uh, were you doing it all alone or did you have someone to help you? I mean, you had these contributors, but as a core team member, did you have anyone else? Not really. Ah, you were alone. Yeah, although I must say that um, 
I had a, I was in a relationship for 12 years uh, with uh, someone who's actually a graphic designer. So she helped me uh, also a little bit in the background. And uh, for example, she also made the logo of Chess Vibes the that I had for the last couple of years. Uh, so uh, yeah, here and there, of course, I had help. So I'm, I'm also grateful for that. And uh, but to be honest, I was also just working a lot myself, working very hard and. Uh, I guess it paid off because at some point Chess.com uh, chess uh, knocked on the door and uh, basically I got an email from Eric, uh, the CEO, uh, I think it was in January 2013 and he emailed me and he said, uh, like, can we talk? And I replied, yeah, sure, what is this about? And he said, well, basically we, we like what you're doing and we want you to do it for us. <laughs> And uh, well, a couple of months later, after some negotiations, I, uh, I started working for Chesscom. So, uh, and that's already 10 years ago. Like yes. uh, one month ago, I celebrated 10 years at Chesscom. Wow. Yeah. But how was that phase of sort of from Chess Wipes switching to Chesscom? Because you were doing everything on your own and now you're yeah. part of an organization. Was it easy to sort of transition into it? It was great. It was great because for two reasons. One is that uh, they, they basically sort of allowed me to continue doing what I was doing, so I continued traveling. Uh, I continued making videos and writing a lot about chess and going everywhere. But the difference was that uh, suddenly, financially, I was uh, much more secure because uh, they, would, uh, they would give me a monthly salary. So that part was clearly uh, very nice. And uh, the second thing that was very good was that uh, if I, I could take a holiday <laughs> for the first time in like six years, I could actually take a proper holiday at some point. And there were people who could take over from me. They could keep, uh, they could write a bit about the news or they could do some other things. And, and uh, I didn't need to worry uh, about my business anymore. Uh, so I can tell you, um, in 2004, I, I scored an IM norm in Amsterdam. I was very busy playing and I was playing a good tournament here in Amsterdam and I scored a norm. Then with, with Chess Vibes, I hardly focused on my own chess and it was going down and down. And then half a year after I joined Chesscom, in, uh, in May 2014, I played my first tournament uh, since I was a journalist and I was enjoying and I, I didn't have to worry about, uh, about uh, emails or, or business things because Chesscom colleagues were taking over from me and I really had a holiday and boom, I scored another IM norm. <laughs> Just because I was so happy and, and just focused on only the tournament and it was also a very nice surroundings in Liechtenstein. So uh, I think that spoke for uh, how, how, uh, how great it worked out for me that, uh, that I, I could join them and uh, yeah. So nothing but uh, good times since then and uh, it's still a great company and uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's the biggest and yeah. uh, you, you became the director of content. Yes, yeah. and news yeah. at, at uh, yeah. chess.com. Uh, that role has continued, right, until now or at least till... A little bit. It, things have changed a little bit, to be honest. Uh, but to be honest, also in, in chess.com, the titles that we are using are not that big of a deal. And I, I would actually say that I would... Of, it's more accurate to say that at the moment I'm like a senior staff writer. Because, but... Um, uh, since the end of last year, I, I've been actually focusing on writing a book instead. So I'm not writing that much for the site at the moment. And also uh, not directing the news uh, so much. Uh, we have grown a lot, so also our news team uh, now has, uh, has many writers. I think we have at least seven writers who, can, who are doing news articles now. And uh, so I'm still involved and I'm still uh, keeping an eye on things but uh, well this year I guess I, I'm taking like sort of a sabbatical semi sabbatical doing a bit of a personal project but even then Chesscom is supporting me with this and they uh, we just found a different way of working together and uh, it's going well also so well, I, if it's not a secret what is the book you're writing on or it's a secret yeah no it's not it's a uh, noisy Amsterdam streets <laughs> suddenly yeah no, I'm, I'm trying to tell the story of how, how the chess as a sport has, has sort of changed over the last decades. Mm. Influenced, of course, by, uh, by computer and internet and uh, yeah, those things. So, 
telling the story of Chesscom's success, but also Lead Chess success. And before that, uh, online uh, online uh, scenery with, with uh, ICC uh, and play chess, and, but also uh, things about uh, w yeah, how, how computers came into chess, of course, uh, a bit about Kasparov Deep Blue, but also later in the 90s and early 2000s, uh, pr preparation, uh, how things changed. Uh, just the whole, the whole, all the changes and, and what it did to the sport. And of course now, the last couple of years, the incredible rise in popularity, streamers like you and other channels, Levi Rosman, there's so much to tell. And I think, I thought that could be a book and I'm making that book. <laughs> I, think, I think there's no better person than you. Because there, so, if, yeah. if, because there are there, if there's one thing that I've always seen in your articles is how you are able to put things together, even <laughs> when it's a complex topic, right. you are able to get views of different people into yeah. it, and yeah. you connect yeah. very quickly to different people. I think that was uh, like whenever I read some things, you had both sides of the stories covered, or if there was no I, uh, yeah, opinion. I try. It's, it's, of course, it's part of the. What they say in America, journalism 101, that of course, yeah, if it's especially with sensitive topics, it's very important to uh, to try to uh, have different sides and uh, yeah. But the funny thing is that in, uh, in journalism for the site, uh, you need to have the sides of the story, but you should not be part of the story yourself as a journalist, right? That's sort of a rule as well. And uh, now, now that I'm working with publishers and they are looking at material that I'm writing for the book, they're all saying, we want more of you in the book. <laughs> so I have to sort of make the switch and I can suddenly talk about things that I uh, experienced myself in the chess world as well and, and also give my opinions about things. So in that sense, it's kind of a funny uh, project because I have to sort of learn to approach things a bit more personally and it's kind of nice also, yeah. <laughs> and also one more thing I wanted to talk about was I think it was 2017 uh, World Cup when we were working together and I yeah. saw one of the things that you did was putting chess boards in your interviews and you were doing it ah, for yeah, many yeah. years. Yeah, that's actually something that we started uh, also at this tournament in Mexico in 2007. That was the first time I did that. I, we, were, we would film the press conference and then the, and then, uh, the players, uh, Vichy, Grishu, Galfon, they would, they would talk a lot of their variations and we knew that I knew that it doesn't make sense to, to publish this video when, when they're shouting variations and you have no idea what they're doing. So I would screen grab diagrams of, from chess base and, uh, and put that somewhere at the top left or top right and make sure that the position changes when they make the moves. And that, yeah, I, I like doing that. And uh, especially there's a video I did that which is extremely popular is uh, Ivan Chuk, yes. Ivan Chuk, yeah, that was in Gibraltar. And uh, it's a very famous video, and I see it being tweeted uh, like once a year. It, it suddenly pops up again, and yes. people are retweeting it. I was the one doing the board. Yeah, ah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's going the extra mile, you know. There, and I think yeah. that's. Uh, and even now, if you see the chess world, many of the interviews don't have that. But you did it like 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot of work. Well, these days it's a bit easier, but. Uh, it's a lot of work and uh, it helps. I, I'm uh, a bit of a perfectionist, so yeah, you make something and then you're like, uh, but I want this and yeah, yeah, okay, it's another hour, but I'll do it anyway because I want this, you know? So yeah, that sometimes happens with, this, with the business that uh, you start some project and then, of course, when you do it one round and the tournament is 14 rounds yes. and you're stuck to it, you know, the coming three weeks you're actually doing that. <laughs> but yeah. No, I can relate to it. And what is your uh, aim now? Like uh, you, you said you're writing this book, but what yeah. do you see yourself, uh, your role in the chess world or is it going to be also beyond chess that you are planning something? Yeah, it's hard to say. I'm not actually sure. Um, I, I, will, I will probably remain involved, um, but, uh, what I, but and I will do, continue to do some writing, but uh, I'm not sure yet. I, I guess I could return to Chesscom and write a bit more uh, when I have time again. Uh, and I, maybe I will, but uh, there's, there's other uh, ways uh, other, other ways to be involved. Uh, the company has grown. We, also, we suddenly have uh, a lot of different companies under our umbrella. And uh, as a chess player, I always 
Yeah, let's put it this way. I, I've, I've, I've been also always focused on, on, on openings myself as well. I've always prepared a lot for my game. So I could even see myself doing something for Chessable at some point maybe, or what do we have? Well, New in Chess is part of our, the magazine is under our umbrella. And I actually worked for them uh, 20 years ago. I also worked for New in Chess for a bit and I know the guys. So maybe I could do something for them at some point or um, yeah, there's a lot of options I think. Because, and it's crazy because we have like 700 uh, employees now uh, in total or something. Yeah, it's, it's really unbelievable. So, um, yeah, I think there's many, many uh, things I could do. And uh, after the book is over, I, I, I will probably start thinking about it. <laughs> and, and maybe I'll write, I'll write another book. Maybe that's, ah, maybe that's a, I don't know. Yeah. If, it do well, if it does well, maybe I'll write a second one. We'll wait for your book, uh, Peter, and also a huge congratulations to you on your journey. Thank you. From thank humble you. beginnings, like doing things on your own, yeah. you've done so much for the world of chess and uh, congrats. Thank you so much. Thank you.